Hello everyone and welcome to another tutorial series. Today we'll probably be looking at variables and enemies and players attacking based on those variables. So first what we want to do is we want to go to our variable folder. Uh, I named it player var from a couple tutorials ago. And we want to make two variables to start out with. Strength and defense. I do this shortened abbreviation version of them because you might be writing this a lot in your code and you really don't want to write the whole wor word out, you know, save time whenever necessary. Um, so I keep them at just usually three letter values. Um, and how about we just do a hundred for now? A nice good number. And... Enemy. Do we want the enemy? Well, we'll focus on the enemy later. Um, so we have this player variables. And now, we don't want this um, HP to be lowered by 10. We want it to be lowered on based on the variables the enemy and player has. Oh, no. Enemy needs variables, because enemy needs... Um, actually... Because enemy needs defense when you're going to hit him. Mob enemy variables. So under the mob enemy tree we're gonna make uh, variable variable definitions for it. So strength actually we don't even need to. Yeah I forgot. Um, let's go back to your player bears. Um, since we did mob bears all mobs so um, currently Mob, enemy is part of mob, so enemy will have mobs variables. So we don't even need. Enemy already has strength, defense, and health because player. Because this part has health, max, and all these variables. So the variables are shared um, between any anyone in the mob tree or any tree underneath it. So, now that we got that explained, uh, we'll go to player verb. So how do we want to calculate damage? Player slash damage equals, and this is me declaring a variable inside a, a, f a function or verb. Um, Basically, once this var once the code's done, this variable is gone. So it's like a temporary variable, um, and it's just used to store some inf information you only need for a short period of time, like damage. We need to calculate the damage, and then we need to minus it, and then we don't need to worry about this variable again. Until, of course, an enemy attacks again. So every time an enemy attacks, this variable is created, and this variable will be... Usually what I do is I do something like this. So strength. So the user's strength, because the user's attacking, so the use the player will be circ minus E dot defense. So the mob slash enemy slash E Um, defense. Um, divided by three. This is usually the simple formula that I usually use for damage. And then you want to do HP E dot HP minus equals damage. The reason why I put damage into its own variable is because later on you might want you might have special effects that multiply this damage. So you might have if effect equals true uh, damage equals damage times two you might have some like this this is just pseudo code this isn't real code you just might have some effect um, and if it's if it's met the conditions then you might want to multiply your damage by two so because you might have these um, extra things later on that might 
change the damage output. Um, it's always smart to make the damage a variable. And we can always test this out. Oh, oops. Right, my variable name is wasn't strength, it was SDR. So, got a compiler. Okay, so how does this work? Boom. So that works pretty fine. Now we'll see what happens when we change these variables. Let's double them. Actually, let's triple them. Just because we killed them in three hits last time, so if we triple them, we should kill them in one hit. Okay. Let's get these back to... Actually, what's a reasonable... It's more reasonable... Maybe about 50. So that's usually my um, basic code I usually use for damage when I'm just getting started. It works It works quite well. Um, you might want to make it a bit better later on, but it, it gets the job done. So now we will be working on enemies attacking. So what do we have so far? So if mobs in view, um, if it's client, we walk towards, and if it's client, um, let's just do another one here. Mob slash M in view. We will do get step again for mob slash M in view slash get step circ circ dot dir. if M dot client. So basically this is a very similar line, we're basically saying for mob slash m in view, oh oops, that is totally wrong, why did I put view there, never mind, we'll be doing for var slash mob slash m in get, dep, get step, um, of the current circ, and this circ is the enemy right now, because we're under his tree, so in get step of himself and his direction, his current facing direction. So if a so if a mob is in the enemy's um, with between the enemy's current location and his his current direction, then he'll attack. And that's what we're gonna set up. And then we check if m dot client. Make sure that the mob is the client. And just a minute. And then we want attacks. We want to do a similar thing. So M dot well let's do the var damage. Var damage equals circ dot stir minus M dot defense over three. Um, circ, oh, oops, m dot hp minus equals damage. So this is calculating the damage based on, based on the enemy's strength and the mob it is facing's defense, which should be a player because of this statement. So now, M dot HP minus equals defense. And then we want to do a health check to update our health bar and to make it the appropriate um, appearance. And then we want to do a death check. Up. 
put the guild in there. And let's see how it runs now. Oh, oops. Inconsistent. Oh, oops, I accidentally did. Too many indentations for my for loop. Okay. So we run it. Oh, oops. Run it. Ah, yes. So, what's happening is we gotta start changing our death check now. And why is this? Let's look at our death check. Right now, what we're doing, if killed.hp is less than or equal to zero, delete killed. We don't exactly want to delete our player, because you get the same results as I did, but your player just vanishes. So, what you want to do is you want to split if what well, we did again, if killed.client, we want to do something else. Else, I don't know if you've done an else statement yet. If it's else, basically you have your if statement. If your if statement is true, it goes in the if statement. But if your if statement is false, it'll it'll go to the else statement. So if killed dot if killed is a client then run, run this code. If it's not, do else. Else delete killed. So if it's not a client, it's going to be some type of NPC. And we can delete NPCs just fine. If killed that client, um, we're just going to do some basic uh, res responding mechanisms. So we'll say um, strict.lock equals to I hope I can do that. Oh, let's actually maybe he's gonna go different spot. Yeah, so I spawned up here. Kills me. Uh, that's my respawn spot. So let's explain that code a bit. Basically, kill dot lock lock is a variable that is already in in every single mob and it's, it's already a defined variable and a lock defines basically the position the x and y um, tiled position on the map um, so this lo equals locate and I can specify the pixels locations the x value the y value and the z value so, you're probably not too concerned about the Z value when you're first starting out your game. So let's just focus on the X. This basically makes it so the first pixel, first tile space, and ten tile spaces up. And what was the other problem? The other problem is our health bar didn't get updated. So what you want to do is after this is done, you want to do HP equals well killed dot HP equals killed dot max HP and this will make it so your HP is equal to your max HP you can get and then we want to do a health check notice how I how I put this outside of the client or the deleted mob. Well, the deleted mob, in this case, it doesn't matter because the mob's deleted. But if your mob, for example, didn't get deleted, um, you just you did something else with him. You would want to make sure that after after he dies, he runs through this health check. Like if you, instead of deleting him, you actually made him have um, go back to a respawn point or something. Um, since there, they'd be that mob and enemy would be both wanting to um, update their health back to full and checking it. So I'm just going to put it outside of of this if else statement for now because of that. Okay. Oh, these enemies are too strong. Oh. 
Ah, uh, never mind. We should probably put it in there because it's leading the uh, mob, and then the mob's having some errors. Because it's like, hey, health doesn't exist, because, well, this character doesn't exist. So for now, put it in there, but I think the explanation is good for, um, for when you don't want to delete the mob. And I probably will get it, maybe further down the tutorial series, why you wouldn't. And he's attacking just like a beast. So let's go to our um, enemy code. And what we want to do is we want to make him sleep after this. Let's give him some sleep. Let's give him. Let's give us some time to attack him. So he should attack every one second. So this makes it reasonable now to attack them. So we've got our variable set up. Um, we've got some better respawn positions. We've got the mob attacking. I've got variables placed up for their strength. So yeah, I think that's that's probably pretty good for this tutorial series. Of course, soon we probably want to be getting into how do we increase these um, values. What are good methods to increase strength and defense? Um, your other variables. But so far, now we got a basic combat system working. Later in my tutorials, I'm also going to show you how to put numbers above your head. Because um, it's always good to have some type of input to um, how much you're taking off. And how much stronger you're getting over time. Numbers are always good. So yeah. Um, thanks for the tutorial series. Um, I honestly don't know what I'm going to work next tutorial series, but it's going to be constantly progressing. So I will think about what I need next. Um, what's the best thing to do next? Um, so next week, my next tutorial should be out, and thanks you for watching, and have a good day.